Well, good morning, everyone. We're going to do something a little bit different this morning. We're going to spend our worship time preparing our hearts and minds for the upcoming week of prayer for Christian unity, which runs from January the 18th to the 25th each year. What is the week of prayer for Christian unity? You are asking, right? Week of prayer for Christian unity is an annual ecumenical celebration. Christians around the world are invited to pray for the unity of all Christians, to reflect on scripture together, to participate in jointly organized ecumenical services, and to share fellowship. Today's service will be followed up by an eight-day devotional with Bible readings and prayer. Should you wish to receive these devotionals, please indicate in the comment section, and we shall be in touch with you to confidentially get your email address. But first, let's introduce ourselves. Greetings, everyone. I'm Pam Holmes, the minister of Rednersville Albury Community Church on Rednersville Road in, in Caring Place, Ontario, Canada. It's good to be with you again. And I'm Tom Holmes, the minister of the United Churches in Rosin and in Thomasburg. The week of prayer for Christian unity was first proposed in 1908 as an observance within the Roman Catholic Church by Father Paul Watson, founder of the Franciscan Friars of the Atonement in Graymar, New York. Since the founding of the World Council of Churches in 1948, Many other Christian denominations around the world have come to celebrate the Week of Prayer for Christian Unity, and since 1968, the Faith and Order Commission of the World Council of Churches and the Pontifical Council for Promoting Christian Unity have collaborated to produce materials for use over the eight-day period. It is these materials that we are using today. Portions of today's service are based on materials from the International Resources for 2021 Week of Prayer for Christian Unities, prepared by the monastic community of Grand Jean in Switzerland, a group of religious sisters from different church traditions brought together by a common vocation of prayer, of community life, and of hospitality, and by their commitment to Christian unity. And these materials are used with their permission. We are also adapting materials from the Canadian resources for 2021 Week of Prayer for Christian Unity, which have been prepared by an ecumenical writing and animation team of volunteers from member churches of the Canadian Council of Churches. And these work in partnership with the Canadian Centre for Ecumenism and the Prairie Centre for Ecumenism, again used with their permission. All music is either public domain or used with the consent of the composing artist or adapted for use by permission of one license 400-433-M, all rights reserved. We encourage you to comment, like, and share. Each of these engagements makes this post accessible to more people. In the Gospel of John, Christ prays for his disciples before going to the cross. He asked that his followers may all be one, and as he and the Father are one so that the world may believe and have life in his name. That's found in John 17. Christian unity is here made central to the very being of the church and its mission and witness. Today, Christians live with the visions, even as we yearn for the unity promised and commissioned by Christ. The long and often painful history of Christianity has divided our churches because of theological liturgical, and political reasons. Many Christians now strive to heal these divisions, yet honor our diversity through ecumenical dialogue, common action, and relationship building. They also come together to pray for unity, joining Christ in his prayer to the Father. The worldwide celebration of the week of prayer for Christian unity is both the seed and the fruit of this striving for unity in diversity. This time of shared prayer, reflection, and fellowship invites Christians of different traditions to deepen our relationships and to live and witness together throughout the year. The 2021 theme, Abide in My Love, 
and you shall bear much fruit, based on John 15, 5 through 9, calls us to pray and to work for reconciliation and unity in the church, with our human family, and with all of creation. Drawing on the gospel image of vine and branches, it invites us to nourish unity with God and with one another through contemplative silence, prayer, and common action. Grafted into Christ the vine as many diverse branches, may we bear rich fruit and create new ways of living with respect for and communion with all of creation. Thank you for joining with us and others today as we worship God and consider God's work in our lives. We're glad that you have chosen to be with us. No matter who you are, where you are, what you're going through, or how you're managing to deal with our current circumstances, please know that you are very welcome. And we're going to hear the song, Make Spaces for Spirit, performed by Jim and Jean Strathby. Make spaces for spirit, for energy rising, for Pentecost presence, the wind and the fire, a new kind of language, a shift and uplift us to rouse, rouse and inspire. Make spaces for spirit, for energy rising, for Pentecost presence, the wind and of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And also with you. Siblings in Christ, this year the theme of the week of prayer for Christian unity, chosen by the sisters of the community of Grand Champ in Switzerland, is Abide in my love, and you shall bear much fruit. It is the greatest desire of God expressed by Jesus, that we might come to him and abide in him. He awaits for us tirelessly, hoping that, united to him in love, 
we will bear fruit that will bring life to all. Faced with the difference of the other, we risk withdrawing into ourselves and seeing only that which separates us. But let us listen to how Christ calls us to abide in his love and so bear much fruit. In the three moments of prayer that follow, we remember the call of Christ. We turn to his love, to him who is the center of our life, for the path of unity begins in our intimate relationship with God. Abiding in his love strengthens the desire to seek unity and reconciliation with others. God opens us up to those who are different from us. This is an important fruit, a gift of healing for the divisions within us, between us, and in the world. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, you are the vine dresser who cares for us with love. You call on us to see the beauty of each branch united to the vine, the beauty of each person. And yet too often, the differences in others make us afraid. That when we withdraw into ourselves, our trust in you is forsaken and enmity develops between us. Come and direct our hearts towards you once again. Grant us the ability to live from a sense of your forgiveness so that we may be united, praising your name. Please join in on the text that begins with C colon. You who call us to give praise in the midst of the earth, glory to you. We sing your praise in the midst of the world and among all peoples. We sing your praise in the midst of creation and among all creatures. You who call us to give praise in the midst of the earth, glory to you. We sing your praise among suffering and tears. We sing your praise among promise and achievements. You who call us to give praise in the midst of the earth, glory to you. We sing your praise in the places of conflict and misunderstanding. We sing your praise in the places of encounter and reconciliation. You who call us to give praise in the midst of the earth, glory to you. We sing your praise in the midst of rifts and divisions. We sing your praise in the midst of life and death, the birth of a new heaven and a new earth. You who call us to give praise in the midst of the earth, glory to you. The following celebration reflects the ways in which the Sisters of Grandchamp pray. In this tradition, three of the monastic prayer services, sometimes called vigils or nocturnes in the Benedictine tradition, which are usually said through the night, are combined into one evening service. In the same way, our service for the week of prayer for Christian unity is shaped by three sections called vigils, which follow a pattern used by the community of Grashop. Each vigil follows the same pattern, readings from scripture, a sung response, a time of silence, and intercessions. Each vigil also has an action reflecting its theme. The first vigil is abiding in Christ, the unity of the whole person. Psalm 103 reads, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all the benefits of the Lord. The Lord forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities, redeeming your life from the grave and crowning you with mercy and loving kindness, satisfying you with good things, and renewing your youth like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. O Lord, you made your ways known to Moses and your works to the children of Israel. You are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is your mercy great upon those who fear you. As far as the east is from the west, so far have you removed our sins from us. As parents care for their children, 
so do you. O Lord, care for those who fear you. For you yourself know whereof we are made. You remember that we are but dust. Our days are like the grass. We flourish like a flower of the field. When the wind goes over it, it is gone, and its place shall know it no more. But your merciful goodness endures forever on those who fear you, and your righteousness on children's children, on those who keep the covenant and remember the commandments and do them. The Lord is enthroned in heaven and has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels, you mighty ones who do the bidding of God, and hearken to the voice of the word of the Lord. Bless the Lord, all you hosts, you ministers who do the will of God. Bless the Lord, all you works of the Lord, in all places of the dominion of the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. God opens us up to those who are different from us. This is an important fruit, a gift of healing for the divisions within us, between us, and in the world. I'm reading from John chapter 15, the first 17 verses from the New International Version. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. Shall we pray? God of love, through Christ you said to us, You did not choose me, but I chose you. You seek us. You invite us to receive your friendship and abide in it. Teach us to respond more deeply to this invitation and grow in a life that is ever more complete. The joy of our heart is in God. God of life, you call us to be praise in the midst of the world and to welcome one another as gifts of your grace. May your loving gaze, which rests upon each person, open us to receive each other just as we are. The joy of our heart is in God. God who gathers, you knit us together as one vine in your son Jesus. May your loving spirit abide in us as we gather. Grant that together we might celebrate you with joy. The joy of our heart is in God. God of one vineyard, you call us to abide in your love in all we do and say. Touched by your goodness, grant us to be a reflection of that love in our homes and workplaces. May we pave the way for bridging rivalries and overcoming tensions. The joy of our heart is in God. And now a time of silence, which is our action. Very often we think of prayer as something we do, an activity of our own. In this short time, we are invited to an interior silence and to turn aside from all the noise and concerns of our lives and thoughts. In this silence, 
the action belongs to God. We are simply called to abide in God's love, to rest in him. Please join us. The second vigil is a visible unity of Christians. From Psalm 85, if you see a C colon on the screen, please join in. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven all the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. You have withdrawn all your fury and turned yourself from your wrathful indignation. Restore us then, O God, our Savior. Let your anger depart from us. Will you be displeased with us forever? Will you prolong your anger from age to age? Will you not give us life again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what you, Lord God, are saying, for you are speaking peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Lord, you will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before you, and peace shall be a pathway for your feet. 
And I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 through 13a from the New International Version. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers and sisters, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas. Still another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized into the name of Paul? Shall we pray? Holy Spirit, you create and recreate the church in all places. Come and whisper in our hearts the prayer which Jesus addressed to his Father on the eve of his passion, that they may all be one so that the world may believe. Kyria eleison. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, Prince of Peace, light the fire of your love in us so that suspicions, contempt, and misunderstanding cease in the church. May the walls that separate us fall. Kyria eleison. Lord, have mercy. Holy Spirit, Counselor of all, Open our hearts to forgiveness and reconciliation and bring us back from our wanderings. Kyria eleison, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, gentle and humble of heart, give us poverty of spirit so that we may welcome the unexpectedness of your grace. Kyria eleison, Lord, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you never abandon the men, women, and children who are persecuted for their fidelity to the gospel. Give them strength and courage and support those who help them. Kyria eleison. Lord, have mercy. Our action is a sharing, a sign of peace. The Lord calls us to be united among ourselves. He gives us his peace and invites us to share it. Well, during this time of pandemic, we cannot physically exchange a sign of Jesus' peace with our neighbors present. We can say together, the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. We're now going to hear the song in loving partnership performed by Jean and Jim Strafty.
The third vigil, the unity of all peoples and all creation. We are now going to read Psalm 96 responsively. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and bless the divine name. Proclaim the good news of our salvation from day to day. Declare the glory of the Lord among the nations and the wonders of God among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But it is you, O Lord, who made the heavens. O oh, the majesty and magnificence of your presence. O oh, the power and the splendor of your sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due the divine name. Bring offerings and come into the courts of the Lord. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before God. Tell it out among the nations. The Lord reigns. The Lord who made the world so firm that it cannot be moved will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord who is coming, who is coming to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world through righteousness and the peoples with truth. And I'm reading Revelations chapter 7, verses 9 through 12. After this I looked, and there behold me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Shall we pray? God of life, you have created every human being in your image and likeness. We sing your praise for the gift of our many cultures, expressions of faith, traditions, and ethnicities. Grant us the courage always to stand against injustice and hatred based on race, class, gender, religion, and fear of those not like ourselves. God of peace, God of love, in you is our hope. Merciful God, you have shown us in Christ that we are one in you. Teach us to use this gift in the world so that believers of all faiths in every country may be able to listen to each other and live in peace. God of peace, God of love, in you is our hope. Jesus, you came into the world and shared fully in our humanity. You know the hardships of life for people who suffer in so many different ways. May the spirit of compassion move us to share our time life, and goods with all those in need. God of peace, God of love, in you is our hope. Holy Spirit, you hear the fury of your wounded creation and the cries of those already suffering from climate change. Guide us toward new behaviors. May we learn to live in harmony as part of your creation. God of peace, God of love, in you is our hope. The action is moving to the center and out to the world, inspired by a text of Dorotheus of Gaza. We are called to be minister of God's healing and reconciling love. This work can only be fruitful when we abide in God as branches of the true vine, which is Christ Jesus. As we come closer to God, 
we draw closer to one another. Imagine a circle drawn on the ground. Imagine that this circle is the world. The center represents God and the paths to the center are different ways people live. When people living in this world, desiring to draw closer to God, walk towards the center of the circle, to the extent that they move closer to the center, to God, they move closer to one another. And the closer they come to one another, the closer they come to God. With the words that Jesus taught us, let us now pray together. Our, Our Father, Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We're going to hear the song, Mother Earth, our mother birthing, performed by Jean and Jim Strafty. and solidarity are inseparably linked. Prayer and action belong together. When we abide in Christ, we receive the spirit of courage and wisdom to act against all injustice and oppression. We say together, pray and work that God may reign. Throughout your day, let the word of God breathe life into work and rest. Maintain inner silence in all things so as to dwell in Christ. Be filled with the spirit 
of the Beatitudes. Joy, simplicity, mercy. These words are recited daily by the sisters of the Grand Jean community. A final blessing. Be one so that the world may believe. Abide in his love. Go into the world and bear the fruits of this love. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and all peace in faith, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us. Please join us next Sunday at 10 a.m. where we shall again gather for live worship. Don't forget to support your local congregations with your tithes, offerings, and gifts. Please like, comment, and share. And join us for our coffee time at 11.15 on Zoom. The link is on this Facebook page in another post, along with the phone-in number. God, God bless. bless.